Let's now look at an explicit example uh, of rotational motion using some of the kinematic equations we had from the last video. So imagine we have a merry-go-round. All right. Imagine we have a merry-go-round and a small child is placed on the merry-go-round and an adult starts to spin the merry-go-round. And initially the merry-go-round is not spinning so its uh, angular velocity is zero and the final uh, angular velocity of the um, merry-go-round is three radians per second and the uh, time interval between uh, the merry-go-round being at rest and being ramped up to three radians per second uh, took nine seconds, let's say. All right. So now my two questions are, what is the angular acceleration of the uh, merry-go-round? And part B, through what total angular displacement did the merry-go-round move through? All right. So let's start out by solving part A. And we can do this a number of ways, but the best way is just going to be to use the definition of angular acceleration. And so uh, delta omega is going to be omega final minus omega initial, which is 3 minus 0. So this is just 3 uh, radians per second divided by my time interval of 9 seconds. And so this is going to be 0 0.333 radians per second squared. All right, radians per second squared. And this is my angular acceleration. So for every second that the merry-go-round is spinning, it's increasing its angular speed by 0.333 radians per second. Now, part B, through what angle do we move through? Well, we can actually use either the second or the third kinematic equation. Now that we have the angular acceleration, um, delta theta appears in the second one. Uh, delta theta is equal to uh, omega i times uh, t uh, plus one half alpha t squared. Or in omega f squared is equal to omega i squared plus two alpha delta theta. And so we can either use either one of them. Let's use the second one since it's already solved for us. So delta theta is going to be equal omega i t plus one half alpha t squared. And we can eliminate the first term because omega i is zero. And so we're just left with one half alpha t squared. And so this is going to be one half times 0 0.333 times 9 squared. Now, one way to get this value relatively quickly is to recognize that uh, this is an infinitely repeating decimal. It was technically one third, uh, right? Three divided or nine, yeah, three divided by nine is one third, and so I'm essentially taking my result of nine squared and going to divide that by three. Now, nine squared is of course eighty-one. Eighty-one divided by three is twenty-seven. So this turns into twenty-seven. And then cutting that in half turns into 13.5. So I've moved through 13.5 radians. Okay, the total angular displacement I've moved through is 13.5 radians. Now, that may not make much sense to you, so let's kind of get a sense of exactly how uh, large of an angular displacement that truly is. So, if you're not aware, one radian, all right, one radian is equal to, all right, let's write it up here, one radian if I have a circle, is equal to the angle that I achieve when my radius and the arc length I've moved through are equal. So theta equals one radian when r and s are equal. Right? And this ratio is the same for every single circle. Uh, it's kind of, it's related to pi, it's kind of like pi, in that uh, the ratio of any circle, the ratio of its circumference to its diameter is always going to be pi. The uh, 
angle that I move through at the point where my um, arc length is equal to my radius will always be one radian, and one radian is about 57.3 degrees. If I look at uh, the circumference of a circle, the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r, and if I correlate uh, 2 pi r, uh, let me put it over here. Uh, remember that the arc length is equal to r times theta, and so if I go all the way around my circle, then my arc length becomes my circumference. My angle is the total number of radians I've gone through, and of course r is the same, but the circumference of a circle is equal to 2 pi r. Therefore, there are 2 pi uh, radian units in a circle, and r stays the same. So, there are 360 degrees in one circle, and there are 2 pi radians, and therefore there are pi radians in 180 degrees. Okay, So there's pi radians in 180 degrees. Now, we went through 13.5 radians. Okay, 13.5 radians. And if I want to convert this to degrees, I can just use this conversion factor. And I'm going to have pi radians divided or, uh, under 180 degrees. And what does this give me? Well, if we do this really quickly, I don't want to do this in my head, so let's uh, just do it real quick here. So if I take 13.5 and I multiply that by 180, and then I divide that by pi, the result is 773.49 degrees. 773. So this is going to get rounded to 773. Okay, 773 degrees. Uh, so it went a little over two full rotations. Okay, so the uh, merry-go-round went uh, over two full, I guess, I should say revolutions. All right, went over two full revolutions. Um, how can I get the number of revolutions directly? Well, we know that there are two pi radians in 360 degrees or one revolution. So if I divide 13.5 radians, or if, uh, let's multiply it by this conversion factor. In one revolution, there are two pi radians. And so how many revolutions have I gone through? Well, if I take 13.5 and I divide that by 2 and I divide that by pi, I get 2.15. So the merry-go-round went around 2.15 revolutions in the nine seconds that it took to um, achieve this angular speed. All right, we'll see you next time.